Welcome to the electric theater. Hey, man. My brother, how are you? I'm good, my friend. I'm good. I'm good. We're going to try this again. All my my energy's in line, so no technology is going to take us out this time. I love that. My uh, my ether has been nothing but over me, man. I mean, I have no doubt that the Orion has been over me the whole entire time of my life, so let's roll. You know, funny, right? So my wife, many, many, many years ago, she pulled me aside once and she goes, you're no good at no moon. I've studied you. You you are best at full moon. This was with no research, no like reading, nothing, just profiling me. So she okay. did it for months, months and months and months and was like, I'm only good full moon. So I start you know. studying that. I start studying that. And man. It's a weird thing, you know, it's a strange thing because I think it was less than a week ago we were at, uh, you know, the smallest moon and I I was knocking things over. I bumped my leg, my neck, my elbow, like uh, having the worst day. I was just off and I just laughed because I feel like some like prehistoric fish that's out of the water because of the tide, you know what I mean? So I think that's the way it works. I mean, but what did we have before we had the device that I'm talking out of now, the television screen, the computer screen, the, the electric lighting. I mean, don't get me started because Egyptians definitely had electric lighting, but you know, there's, they're looking up at the stars and they're, they're knowing when to plant, when to harvest, when, when the cycles of the moon treat them better, their people better. I mean, this is essentially science that now we've almost people ridicule into, you know, oh, you're into astrology, whatever. And you got to understand, I mean, I'm, I'm married to a witch for 23 years, red haired witch. Her mom and her were, were, were born on the same day. Um, she's been practicing since she was a child. I've been practicing reading tarot since I was a child. I mean, I can throw bones and read tarot to the point where, you know, if you ask me to do it in front of people, I may tell you things that turn your face ghost white and we've seen it happen. So the things that we kind of negate now in this culture, in this technological matrix we're in, we're forgetting the past and going back to what is real and, and, and what does actually control us. So, yeah, it's good. it's good that she did that. And that actually shows you have somebody with you that cares, my brother. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was good. I was going to say that it's like, you know, for me, I'm, I'm I'm blessed to have had another human being who has their own path to be able to have enough tolerance to help me out in my own path and give me some wisdom that I would have never been able to pay attention to because of the things that I allow that are in front of me that take up my time. Um, and I, I laugh every time I'm telling you, it was like three or four days ago, man, you know, I'm really bad with like memorizing, you know, like structural words around like, you know, just the names of the planets and there's just so many words in my head. So I can't always remember, you know, the, the stages of the moon, but just a couple right. of days ago, seriously, I was, I looked up and one of my bros was over and I'm like, yep. Yeah, I could have, I could have guessed, but I didn't. And I'm like, my whole day has been shit and I'm off. And I, and now I know why I'm stuck on the shore and I need right. to get back and you to know, the ocean. And yeah, now you're tuned in. Now you're tuned in. So two, two things, I guess, you know, let's work backwards with that. It's like now you're tuned into, to what actually guides you as a human. So good for you. Right. And then, uh, previous to that, it's like, we all need to find that mate, that person in our life that makes us whole. We're herd animals. Um, you know, having a solitary existence is what most musicians have. I mean, I've lived on the road away from my family for, you know, almost 30 years. You know that. You know the story, you know. Um, I'm in a part in my world now where I don't tour without my best friend, without my wife. You know, I've already missed the funerals, the, the, my kid graduating from high school. Like, if I told you the things, the sacrifices that the family's been through to have music, right? It all comes back to one thing. You have that one person behind you that makes you whole. And it's like the old adage, you know, your mom used to say, she's like, you know, a good woman will make you better. A bad woman will, uh, will destroy you. It's so very true. 
And uh, it's good. One hundred percent. Compatible. And and you know, look, <clears throat> when you can find that that person that's compatible and that kind of guiding force within your life, like you can adapt to anything, and you can you can reach higher levels and higher goals and uh, I know that Anastasia is my biggest champion. I mean, I run, you know, five to six businesses at a maximum level. Uh, I sleep five, four, five hours a night max since I was a kid. She had to adapt to that, you know, um, and she's always been behind me. So, you know, good for you, man, you know, and yeah, there you go. So it's good to talk well, to you today, man. I, 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 I knew that um, last time we just we couldn't really hear each other, and so I had a weekend to kind of kick back and go, all right, well, let's have a conversation with Clown next week because, uh, you know, I love you, buddy. You know, you, I'm proud well, of all you said. I, I love you too, man. You you wouldn't believe it, man. You would you you know I have this I have this thing. You know, people used to call it the black cloud and. People have had, you know, they used to call me the virus and all this stuff that has hovered over me. Um, and, you know, if I wanted to be personal, personal, there's a lot of things that go into that that I can explain. But there's also there's also a majority of it that is too profound for me to understand that I'm still searching. But <clears throat> on the day that we were trying to connect, I mean, you right before I was talking to you, I was talking to my therapist, and right at the crescendo of the conversation, the phone goes dead. So I got to contact her on a cell phone. They don't work out here where I live, and it just starts getting more intense. Now I'm chasing time. Time's real, and time's a wasting, and time's a clicking, and everybody's moving on it. And I don't necessarily want to subscribe to it. So now I'm chasing this weird thing that's happening. There's no explanation, Des. There's no reason my my <laughs> house phone just turned off in the middle of a conversation at the height of it. And then I try to get you, and it's just blah, 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 you know, in and out, in and out. And I, here's exactly what happened. I get off with you. I shut off my cell phone. And well, I called the office. I'm like, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. I turn everything off. I go outside. I light a fire. And I sat there for two hours and stared into a fire just to get myself to an area of understanding that if there is something in the world or the solar system that has something personal on me, like a demon or uh, many demons or anything that's fucking with me, it's like, you know, I had to take a couple. I had to take a couple hours to pull it back in. So that was a very interesting day, and I can say this to you because I know you understand, and you're one of the few people I could actually say this to. Is I spent a lot of time thinking about you in those two hours because I'm like, it makes sense that Dez and Clown were on the phone and 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 the powers to be zapped it. You know, that's where I go. I'm just like, I haven't talked to you forever. You know, there's probably some thought of, you know, what are we going to talk about? What a lot of catching up to do, lots of catching up to do, and then we try to do it, and the solar system takes it out. So I know you know all about you know all about that, man, and you know, oh, I do. You know do. us. You know you and I. You know us. You I know? do. So. And there's and there's two things I learned from a really great business partner that I had. Um, actually, I, I, we're not in business, but we talk daily still. He's a mentor of mine. Two things I run my life by, Clown. And, and one of them, one day I, I, we had a big deal going down. We we're uh, doing some stuff with, with stocks and this and that. And I called him and I said, look, we got to do this. We got to do that. He says, listen, I'm taking a mental day today. And I said, what the fuck do you mean? I need 20 <laughs> minutes right now. Of this. I need 20 minutes of your time right now. We need to make some decisions for the business. Man, I need a mental day. Click. And he disappeared. 24 hours. So I didn't really bring it up. The next day we just got down to business about a week later. We're talking. I said, what was that about? He goes, listen, man, every once in a while, maybe once a month, maybe once six months, maybe twice a week. I don't know. My brain, my body tells me, don't go into business today. Don't do this. Don't do that. It's not him reading astrology. It's not anything. It's his gut. It's his feeling. It's his energy. It's his soul. We're 98% water. We're electricity. And it's him saying, I'm going to shut down today. Sure enough, that next day he came back firing so hard, firing back so hard with business that he was way more on top of it almost than I was. I had to catch up. So, And then another principle that he taught me is 
Watch the movie play itself out. So this goes to the phone going out, you sitting by the fire. Watch the movie play itself out in life. You never go into the theater knowing how the movie ends. And if you do, don't go see the movie. You're wasting your time. Life is exactly the same way. It's a movie. Things will happen. Life will happen. Birth will happen. Death will happen. Pain will come. Joy will come. And at the end, we sit there and say, what was our story? What were we through? As far as having demons and as far as having a cloud follow you, you know, look, I, I, I'm a firm believer in the Native American culture. I'm one of the, I'm the only Anglo let into the Coyote Pass clan in Window Rock. I'm a Navajo. I was brought in by shaman. I believe in sage. I believe in chance. I believe in clearing that. You know, I don't mind getting on uh, Ouija or tarot and talking to some of those people if they want to come through because I feel like I'm protected and I know what I'm doing over on this side, which actually no one does. But you go and you watch the movie play itself out and you also go into your own electricity and say, look, if I've had any of that before, if I've had any of that dark cloud over me, um, if I if I have seemed like that even to people, if I look in the mirror and I've got black circles around my eyes and I need to sleep, then you know what you do, man. It doesn't matter. Even if you have to take a week off and go to Fiji, of course, you can't do it now during a pandemic. You take, you leave and you leave everyone, but, but your family, you take them with you and you come back to you because until you're in you, you can't do anything for anyone else. And so, yeah, there's a lot of lessons to be learned. I think you and I only learn those as we get older. Um, I'm definitely not the same person I was in my, you know, in my early twenties when we first took Slipknot on their first run with Cold Chamber. I mean, I'm a way different person and, um, you're a way different person. Um, but you're driven, you know, and you've had, you've had love, you've had loss, you've had joy, you've had tragedy, just like all of us, just like everybody that's probably listening to this podcast. And we should all take it as such, you know? You know, my wife, so look, sometimes you're washing dishes and the, and, and the sponge just stinks. Wash it off or, or, or get, or, or get a new one or get a new one. You know, it's a, it's a crazy situation. I mean, I adopted a lot of things in my life that really helped me out, man. I mean, I don't get up and get right on my phone. I'm up at 4.35 AM every morning. You and I toured for, I mean, I toured longer than you. I started before you. So I've been touring almost 30 years. I missed mornings for almost 30 years. My goal was to get to bed before the sun came up. Now my goal is to get up before this before the sun comes up, sit outside no matter how cold, no matter how hot, do sun salutation and actually greet the morning with gratitude, do meditation, try to eat right. I've been vegan forever, right? Sober, vegan forever. Before before it was a trend. I did it for me, for my body, because you know, you start hitting a certain age, time to get in shape, right? And it goes and all of that plays a part, I think, with your mind and your state of mind. For other people to be around, what you project to other people. I could be in the most negative fucking place in my life, but if you're going to sit and talk to me, I'm going to leave you with a positive feeling. You know, somebody said to me the other day after a business meeting, that was more of an Anthony Robbins speech than a business meeting, but God, you got them all to sign on the dotted line. I said, why? Yeah, of course I did, because it's all positive. If you look at it the right way, it's all positive. Now we're all, we're all rolling forward. Right. But a lot of people don't come into it with that, man. You know, there's a lot of negative aspects in life that are happening. I mean, look what we're going through right now. We're going through a pandemic, a crisis in in the world. Everyone's locked in. We you and I could talk hours on that and the conspiracy I have for that and 5G and Bill Gates and Fauci. And I could go on and on and on. But there's been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of life loss for sure. There's been a lot of a lot of loss. A lot of loss for families. I've got, you know, I come from a blue collar working class family clown. I was on the job site every morning at seven, eight year old with my stepfather and I was working. And I know what it's like. I was a bricklayer when I got the record deal. I did a bunch of other things as well. And, you know, you look at the families on my block right now and, you know, they're outside washing their cars and you're talking to them. And it's like, well, I don't know how I'm going to make my house payment. You know, I mean, we're going through really a crazy time and people need to be need to be positive through this, need to be way positive through this, and need to find the positive aspects to this. As long as you can feed yourself, then what you need to do is take the positive out of it. Like, I've made dinner for my family more than I've ever made dinner for my family in the last 30 years over the pandemic. Right, I spent right. more time, my, spent more time, I've got three sons. I spend more, more time with my youngest son than I probably ever have 
well, no, we're, we're all very tight family, but more time, you know, like, what do you mean you've never seen Scarface? Okay, well, I'm going to turn you on to the original black and white, which if you don't know, by the way, you should watch that. Now I'm going to turn you on to Scarface with Al Pacino. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you, wait, how is this possible? You're in an Italian family. We have mandatory dinner at seven uh, every Sunday, and you've never seen The Godfather. You've seen it on at the house a million fucking times. Bronx Tale is your favorite, favorite movie of all time, but you've never seen The Godfather. So, boom, in The Godfather world we go. So we got to take the positive things out of, out of what's happening, you know, I think. And I guess that's my whole speech in life is stay up, keep your head up, grind, grind harder than the next guy. Don't be a whiner. Like I come from that. That's where I come from. That's the generation I come from. That's how I was raised. You know, I'll tell you now that even through this, it's, I've got people calling me, what do I do in pandemic world? It's like, you don't bitch and whine, you go do something. So I'll give you an example. My lighting guy, who's a light guy, he has no tours. His clubs are closed. He opened a, a hand sanitizer business and he's selling in North Carolina to the military. He's making more money in four days now than he's ever made on tour. Because he got smart and he switched up what he had to do. So during this time, we all got to stay positive. We all got to switch it up. We all got to find new things to do. You know, we all got to figure out new things. Maybe now's the time to think, hey, if I'm in the airline business, if I'm an airline stewardess, you know, if a, a steward, if I'm, if I'm in the retail business, if I'm, if I'm, uh, you know, if, if I'm in the, uh, if I'm in the, uh, if I'm in the business of, I'm a waiter. Like now's the time to get out and find something new because that those jobs are going to, I mean, even when we open up completely, it's going to be weird and social distancing. I mean, I, I've been social distancing my whole fucking life. So it really does. Nothing has changed for me. I've used Instacart from the day one. It came out years ago to, you know, so nothing has really changed. I don't, I'm not, I don't think, I don't think people would believe you. Um, you know, when you, like you say that, I, I agree with you. I, I'm the same way, man. I, I've been that way since the very first tour I hit. I can remember, I can remember coming onto a bus and we allowed two young men on the bus who were fans who were outside in the cold for all day. They were both sick as hell, snot coming out of their noses. We had <laughs> empathy. We had empathy. We brought them up on the bus. We had a 40-footer piece of shit. It had cloth seats, not leather. We had no money to sanitize. We got these guys warm. They soaked their sweat into our stuff. The next day, I was getting a spinal tap, and we canceled one of the fewest shows because Corey Taylor went in, too. He went in, and uh, I went in separately, and we both went down because we catered to there. the sick. And you know what? I've Ever there. since that day... Ever since that day, and that was that was on the first cycle, I social distance because I'm like, we would meet thousands of people in a day, right? Am I right? How many hands would you shake oh, yeah. if you did an in store? Thousands, oh, you know. Good. Oh, good and, God, yeah. You know, I get, I used to get ridiculed in the band because we would do an in store in London, and I would wear, I would wear surgical gloves, and. You know, guys in the band would be like, you're a prick. And I'd be like, talk to me after this. So <laughs> I start wearing the crap because I would watch fans sit there and make out with their girlfriends. They'd have their hands down their pants, pick their nose, their ears, run it through their hair, you know, scratch their armpit, touch their other friends. And then they want to shake my hand. And it's oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so. I don't know if people would believe, like, you know, you social, maybe you have even before you were jamming, but yeah, man, I think everyone in our position, you know, first time I went to Japan, I literally laughed at the first person I saw with a mask. I was like, look at this guy. What's he think? He's sick? Yeah. And then the translator's like, he is. He's trying not to get me sick because I got to come here and translate for you. I was like. Uh, Japanese, Japanese culture is so beautiful. Yeah, We've been taking I had a. a the 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 light bulb didn't go off in my head. It got smashed down on my head. It was like, boom, dumbass. And I was like, my God, the Japanese yeah. people have it figured out. I'm like, they're doing that for me. I mean, it was uh, beautiful. We love that culture. We love yeah, that we love culture. it. We, 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 we've been spending time learning Japanese, and I'm getting pretty good. And uh, my wife, I woke up last week, um, and she was on the computer really early, and she was looking at houses in Kyoto. 
You know, like, what are you oh, doing? Man, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's amazing, so I man. think, you know, definitely uh, she's going to purchase, we're going to purchase property there for sure. I mean, I love that culture. But yeah, I mean, when you're, when you're touring, you definitely come in, in contact with so many people. And, and are the days of that contact over? Like, I'd like to think not. Like, I'd like to shake a hand or say hello. But, you know, you have those times when you shake a hand and, yeah, you're sick for another two and a half weeks. You're canceling shows. Or the dude that wants to give you a hug and you're like, ah, uh, reluctantly you do it. And then you smell your arm, you know, you smell your top of your shoulder and you're like, fuck. You know, oh, you my just, God. That is the just, worst. But you know what? That's, these are the people. That's who the buy, worst. These are the people who buy our records, right? These are the I people love who, every one you, of them. Yeah, me too. And it's like your lyrics saved my life. Give me a hug, and I'm gonna say no. Like I, I personally can't do it. So what I did last year is I, I stopped all meet and greets. Like I don't think I've done a meet and greet in almost two years because it's just I got horribly sick, and we had three weeks to go. Uh, with Devil Driver and I don't know who else we were with, but dude, the whole tour was sick. And um, I kind of said to myself, look, you know, it's I, I'd rather walk outside the bus and, and say hi to everybody, not charge them at this point right now, and then get away with not having to sit there and talk for 45 minutes if someone's going to be sick, you know, because they just don't realize it, right? My wife says it best. Everybody that comes to your gig, it's their Friday night. So if it's Monday night, it's their Friday night. If it's Tuesday yep. night, you're tired. You're tired. This is your tenth show in a row. It's their Friday night. You got to remember, it's their Friday night. And I personally learned this early on from like Hank Three and even Ensamo. You don't leave a kid standing out by the goddamn bus and not shake his hand. You don't. And if I've never not done that, it's because I'm either like running to the bathroom, <laughs> you know, or I got to get the stage within five minutes, you know, or I didn't, I literally didn't see you. I was in bed. I went straight to bed after the show, but it's the guys who ignore that and ignore those people and they lose their career very quickly. Ego, ego will kill you in this business. And I've never taken it on. I've always been, you know, kind of a blue collar work ethic down to earth kind of cat in this, in this thing that we do, you know what I mean? And I think, I think that's, that's important. You know, it's important to keep, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, we got to see where all this is going to go and how this is going to affect our industry and if we'll ever be able to do meet and greets again. I mean, look, I, I, I don't like the government in my business. I'm a Freemason and I really don't like the government in my business. I don't like my civil liberties being taken away. Even if there are people uh, in the hospital and one of them could me could be me. Right. But I don't, I don't know if taking civil civil liberties is, is the right thing to do, you know? And I just, it's a real, it, it's hard, you know, it's hard. At one point you're like, we're so glad we shut down the country. And at another point you're like, you're not hearing about all the suicides and this and that, you know, after, let me give you an example. Three weeks after the shutdown, three weeks after the shutdown, like don't go anywhere in our area specifically. This guy killed his whole family and then killed himself down the street from me. And it's like, why? And you're going to find out later, you know, lost all his money in the stock market. They're going to come take the house. You know, he's quarantined with his wife and they weren't getting along in the first place. Like there's going to be a lot of mental fallout from this thing, you know, and it goes back to where we were talking just so we don't get lost. Stay positive. Stay hopeful. Stay in the grind. Don't just sit and go, my job is done. What am I going to do? Form a new job. You know, I said, this is, this is, this is going to shock everybody, maybe, or maybe not, right? Thousands and thousands of farmers right now, in a time when everybody's hungry, are dumping their product. Okay? So you got farmers dumping milk, farmers dumping, you know, I don't believe in the dairy industry anyways. It's terrible, but farmers dumping, you know, strawberries, farmers dumping lettuce or now, why? Because they don't have people to come pick the crops. Because the president hasn't let people come through from Guatemala or wherever that come in and do, do that kind of hard labor. Those kind of great people that do that kind of hard labor. So if, back in the Depression, anybody, black, white, red, blue, green, doesn't matter, would go do those jobs and make money. So you've got people going, I'm, I'm out of work, I need money. Yeah, well, there's jobs to get. You just got to go look for them. You know? And it's a it's a strange situation, man. Like I said, I got I got brothers and sisters in the, in in the uh, actually lived uh, blocks away from me that you know are not are not doing well right now. They got to get back to work. They, we got to get we got to get things happening. So yeah, that's that's that. I mean, uh, 
we got to see how all this plays out. But the bottom line is you got to stay positive. You got to stay in the grind. You got to keep your family up and you got to keep yourself up. And, uh, and you, I like, you know, keep it. I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, you know, in life, we can all stay knee deep and, and, and you know, breathe above it and maybe get drawn underneath and drown you know there's that that there's a fine line but you know we're above or under so being positive is absolutely the way to go usually what i do right now with people because you know there is a lot like you said there are levels and layers under what we're all being told what we watch what we hear what we're even educating ourselves by listening to others who are educating themselves there's layers that we ignore. So what I try to do, like no one's talking about the prisons, you know, I mean, we could talk for hours about these human beings who are quarantined in their quarantine. And we could talk about medical uh, assistance in the prison system. You know, we could get into this. That's, that's a layer that people are going to ignore. They don't we could talk about the we could talk about the reservations. No the reservations we could we could obviously the homeless you know way up there. It, the, we ignored the homeless to begin with. Now what's happening? I mean, what layer of, of humanity are we at now when we're like you said throwing away crops, but yet we have this homeless problem? What I like to do with the people around me, and this is probably going to be misunderstood or whatever, but you just have to work through it. But in times like this, I like to go to like national geographic and I like to yeah. watch, like, I like to watch like the oxen take on like <laughs> three, li take on three lions. You yeah. Know? Okay. I get and, it. Yeah, I get and, it. and I, and I like, and I like to watch the oxen leave, but then I go opposite. I like to watch the giant gator, come from nowhere and take a baby calf stealth. Just like I haven't eaten a month. This is what I do. I'm a dinosaur. Poof. Why do we hate? Why do we hate on the alligator who's been eating the baby? Cause it can't run and you know, doesn't know. And this is just goes on. This is life. Okay. This is what I like to remind myself is that life is going to find a way. And the brutality of life is there. No one's talking about okay, so this is, this is no exactly one's talking about talking influenza about. or malaria. I mean, go look up the stats on malaria since whenever you want to look at it till now. Oh, it's yeah. serious. Oh, yeah. It's serious business. But but I just find it interesting that we all ignore. I mean, I guess to put it blindly, besides you know, National Geographic. Lions, tigers, and bears, right? It's like life is an onion. Yeah, a spider gets a fly and decides to eat it later. We're like, oh, that spider wrapped up that fly. Then we go get a Dairy Queen. What about the consciousness of that fly being wrapped up for 48 hours? What's going through its thought process? So life always finds a way, and there is always something worse outside. There's always 100%. something. You know what I mean? And yes, we are in a pandemic. You know, we're, we're, this this is unusual. This is crazy. This is bizarre. It's surreal. It's unfortunate. It's it feels tragic. It feels disastrous. It feels all these things. But I believe in life because I've seen mountains explode and take down forests, and a year later there's a flower. Right? We, you know, it's sort of exactly tribe. But you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Wisdom's good, and being older is better because you know we just feel that positive, like you say. I love I mean, that. Too, we life, life's, an, life's an onion, man. There's so many layers you got to peel back. Like, and then you you look at this thing. Like, what is the end game of this thing? What is the end game? What is the end game of maybe the government? What is the end game? You know, like you got to go there. Like, no one's looking at that. What's the end game? Oh no, it's just the pandemic and they shut us down. No, there's an end game. Are we going to cashless society? Are we going to mandatory vaccine? Are we going to an RF chip with mandatory? Like, where are we going? What's the end game? What's the end game of killing everybody middle class and down? What's the end game? So here's what I say to anyone who's listening that's affected by this. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And you'll come out of this. And you'll come out of it stronger if you just get inside yourself and annihilate any of that negative that's coming at you. 
It doesn't matter if it's your someone even if you're living with or it, or anything around you. Just go, look, I'm going to come through this. That's it. That's the bottom line. It's a crazy situation we're in right now. And you know, like, I mean, this is great that you and I are actually talking at this point in time in history because I follow this guy, a mentor of mine, Dan Pena on Instagram. And he, and he says, this is the time in history you will refer to as back then. You know, you talk to your grandparents, well, back then before the depression, back then after World War II, back then, you know, my father, back then after Vietnam, back then before Vietnam, everything now, the kid who is born now to us and older, my parents, your parents will all say back before the pandemic, back after the great pandemic, it's going to be, uh, it's unbelievable what we're living through, but I'm just, I'm trying to get the narrative, a little bit of the narrative from our government, a lot of the narrative from all sorts of underground sources, which by the way, I know you're a huge proponent of anti-censorship and YouTube and Facebook have been censoring people, censoring doctors, censoring David Icke, censoring people who are talking about these things and taking their platforms off and removing them. So what the fuck is going on there? Do I live in America? What is happening with these platforms that are actually really, in reality, public utilities, and they're censoring people? We're, we are in a time now, like when you see the name, I'm going to announce the name of my new record May 22nd. When you see the name of my new record, you'll get it. You'll understand exactly what I'm talking about right now. And when Demo. you say your new record, sorry, I, because I love the fact that your brain goes so many places to get out all the intellectual property, your art, your, your consciousness, your subconscious. What project, new album? What well, Devil it? Driver's got a double. Okay. A double okay. Driver's just, got a... You do so much, Des, is what I'm saying. You have so many things <laughs> you do. I, I, I just have to, you know, I have to. Okay. I figured it was that. I'm just making sure. It's that. Yeah, okay, so go on. Go on. Devil Driver has a double record coming. Uh, we're going to release sometime in October, but I've got a single coming in May, uh, the third week in May. And um, I'll, I'll send you a private link because I, I trust you. I trust, I trust you with my life. Hey, I'll send man, you a link. people like us, we don't have time to get sued. That's what I tell people when they give me the NDA. <laughs> when they give me the NDA speech, they're like, Clown, you're the one that asked for it. I'm like, I know, because do you think I have time to get sued? Just send the you shit. Know, no, we, I don't we have don't. time fact, to play it for Bob that. down the street. Bob's going to get me sued. I need to buy it's a lawnmower. So you know, so yeah, yeah. And then, and, you and, can and, trust and, me, so brother. <laughs> it's so true. And, and then and then if we do get sued, we have attorneys that just squash it. So it's great. I love it. But you know, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll send it out to you. Um, hey, you know, but, just off, off. Off, just just off subject, just because you said it like this, just to give them a quick one. The first person, you'll never guess who is the very, this is ironic, this is funny. The very first person appear, an iconic peer, uh, told me about lawsuits in our business. I, I, I would have you guess, but there's a billion of them. So anyway, first show, Cold Chamber Tour, Deep Bellum Live. I get off stage opening for Cold Chamber. I go on the bus. I threw a keg out in the audience. Okay, now okay, I got some. Okay, I, fuck. I had. I got I got Okay. I was dealing with the police and this kid yep. and yep. things, and I had a rough night. And earlier in the day, I had met a kid, a fan of all of us. His name was Nick Crows. I sense he's passed. I've heard. Um, he's since passed. Yeah, I know, I know, and, I know, little Nick. Yeah, no arms, no legs. Uh, yeah, ended up being a really Nick. good no, no friend. Arms, no, yeah, no yep. arms, no legs, and shrug himself to shows on a skateboard for people who are listening oh, no. who don't know Nick. Yeah, yeah, and sang, and sang, and and he's the and, raddest, raddest little kid ever. He was. Oh my god. And, yeah. I, I met him early in the day and I met him because he came up on a skateboard and skidded by me and he goes, so you're the fucking clown. And he extended his hand and I looked down and I would never think anyway, cause I don't care. I don't care who you are, or what's wrong with you. I love you. Right. So I reached course, down yeah. and I would just remember looking at, you know, I'm, I'm an intense person and I got my thing, but in the end, man, I'm here for, 
the right reasons and always have oh, been. Oh, of course. Bro. But of but course. I go down there and I grab his his half arm and he's got this rubber nub thing on it and it's just scratched yeah. the fuck because of skateboarding. And I remember grabbing that and I remember it scratching my palm and I remember looking at him going, that's fucked up. And we start laughing and we got a relationship right away. But anyway, uh, you know, rest in peace, Nick. He was a great fan to all of us. Yeah, you know, do you know, now, now, Clown, do you know Nick's story? Because for people out there who, who don't know Nick, you've got to imagine this this little guy, skater kind of kid, uh, no arms, no legs, on a skateboard, lived life completely normal. His story will give you the most ray of hope through the most ignorant, tragic circumstances ever. There was a fire at his house. Yep. And his mother, who ran out of the house during the fire, decided it'd be better if her son was dead and left him to die in his room upstairs as the fire consumed the downstairs. He jumped out his own window, rolled down his second story onto the concrete, and survived. So people, you got it easy. If you can walk, if you can breathe, if you can tell someone you love them, if you can tell the person, fuck off, you've been waiting forever and you finally saw him, <laughs> you know, if you can do these things, you're good. If you put one bit of food in your mouth with real hands and fingers today, you're set. That's right. People, and lost, <laughs> people lost sight of what life is and beauty is. That's the only probably good thing about this whole thing is it's made everybody stop. It doesn't matter if you're a fucking rock star. It doesn't matter if you're building hotels. It doesn't matter what the fuck you're doing. You're done. You're going yep. home to your family. Go Reset. figure out who you are. You know what I said? Two things Set to default. Two, two things are going to happen. Insane divorce rates <laughs> because people are finally trapped with the person they knew they didn't want to be with, right? Or we're going to have pandemic babies in nine months. Like it's going to be insanity, bro. By the time Christmas comes, we're going to be overwhelmed with kids coming from this generation. <laughs> yeah. That's so the layer I'm talking about. That's the layers. I mean, layer. yeah, there's so layers that we're not even ready to consume, you know? Absolutely. Uh, and so, so for Nick, nobody that knows Nick, you know, rest in peace, it, Nick, but that's the story, you know? I fell in love with Nick just to take you about his uh, potential and his positive potential and what he could even do with his handicap. So he had no arms past his elbows and no legs past his knees. And that's how he got around a little bit. And, and I fell in love with him so quick. I asked him if I could carry him out on stage and he was like, man, I love this band. So I carried him out on stage. And when I threw him off my back, I, I remember two things. I remember the way I threw him, he looked like a Chinese star going through the air. And I was laughing uh -huh. and, he, and he was laughing and he was laughing and we were in it, man. We were fucking in it. And I remember when he hit the floor, he moshed for like a minute and a half down there and oh, just God. waylaid people. And I thought what, like you were talking about, I thought, man, I'm like handicapped people hone in, you know, to he a had different no handicap. He, he had no yeah, handicap. Yeah, they hone into a different uh, life source, a different and he, and area and that yeah. we, we're handicapped, you know. I, and I, we, and, and we, yeah, we're handicapped. Fucking well said. There you, you know, go. It, it's true, though. It's true, you know, but, but, but you're right. I mean, God, I miss him. And, and, you know, he, yeah, he has passed, but, uh, but to to bring to bring the to bring the funny shit to it to even Nick because Nick was at the bus with me he's like you all right Carl I'm like who's all right talking to the popo I'm like they've had me for an hour and fifteen I just want to get on the bus and chill the fuck out I'm okay like, so let me tell you a story about let me tell you a story about that day homie I walk well on let the me bus. let me let me just tell you about the insurance and I want to hear it I'll just tell you right okay. so so I get on the bus finally I'm like Nick I gotta go. Love you, man. That was great. You're awesome. Good to meet you. Man, when we come back sometime, please come by. I said goodbye to the kid, you know, that the K was around and shit. And the cops were all over me. And I'm like, I'm going to bed, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I go up. I go to the back. And I open the door. And Joey and Paul and Vinny and Dime are all back there. And I had never met Vinny or Dime or anybody like that in my life. 
And I remember opening the door and seeing those two dudes <laughs> just fucking uh-huh. shutting the door. And I tried to get out of the bus as fast as I could. And all I hear was like, get your ass back here. And I come back and Vinny just tells me a story about some kid suing him about catching a drumstick in the eye. And he's yep. just reprimanding me going, listen, son, you can't be throwing kegs in the audience. <laughs> he's like, I threw a stick to a fan and it was 10, you know, I mean, he just went and we were laughing and it was and he like, my hair, yeah, he did. No, he did right there. You know, there, I had a chip, you know, I was like, cause it, I'm me. And I'm like, you know, someone's altering <laughs> my behavior, you know, I'm like, it, 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 it. but I'm looking at a legend and he's taking the time out in his day to literally tell me a logistic in life. And I know he's not the kind of person that really gives a fuck about too much of the logistics in life. And so if he's taking the time to tell me like this precise thing, I better listen. You know, this is Vinny right. Paul. Okay. And, and, the whole and now time, over the years, you look at how many times you've been sued over the years, you know, and you think back to every time he said that. Every time, man. And because, because of that talk, I, I did get myself, I prevented myself from plenty of them. I'm like, I went in to do something. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to stay away from this one tonight because energy's not right. You know, it's like that. That is same, that is, that is Jack We pull up. I'm very familiar with the band. I'm the one that got sent the record by Roadrunner. I'm the one that put you on the tour. I told Meeks, look, I'm putting on my eyeliner and all the stuff we do. Go in and check out this band because you've never seen them. I've been listening to them. I've been living at the Beverly Hills Hotel, making our record. We're going out on tour. I've been trying to turn you on. Now they're here. Go check them. Meeks goes out. Meeks comes back 15 minutes later. I shit you not. He looks like he saw a fucking ghost. He was white in the face. He's Mexican. He was white in the fucking face. He looked right at me and goes, you're bringing them for eight weeks? And I said, no, dude, seven weeks. But yeah, we're bringing them. And he goes, we have to follow that for seven weeks? That dude in the mask, I said, which dude? There's nine guys in masks. That dude with the clown mask threw a kick and hit some kid in the fucking club. And I said, yep gonna be a bitch to follow that's gonna be fun you better get at it we, we better we, we better pump, we better pump it up that's nine dudes out to kill every night don't you remember the hunger by now we're on our second record you know we finally you know we're moved out to big tour buses everything's selling out i'm like you better get your hunger back in you you better remember when we lived together in a small apartment traded top ramen and fought people on sunset boulevard together like you better fucking get the hunger an hour later he's getting ready he walks back he goes what are the chances we could get him removed from the tour? Now, this is a story I've never told. I want you to call Sharon Osborne. We're married, managed by Sharon and Ozzy at that point. I want you to call Sharon. And I'm like, I'm not calling Sharon, and I'm not getting this fan removed. The fans starting their fucking career. They're on Roadrunner Records. I fucking love it. I'm a huge Kiss fan. What they're doing is, an, is a new Kiss for me, and this fan's going to be massive. And he's like, he grudgingly, begrudgingly went and got a beer, put on his makeup, and went out and, we went out and did our thing. We had to follow you guys for seven weeks, and it was badass. I still, to this day, love going on a band who wants to get me at my age. Come get me. Or go on after me, I'm going to come get you. If you're in your 20s, and you're going on after me because you're the new hot thing, and somehow I slipped on the bill or whatever, I'm going to get you. I'm going to fuck it up. And you feel the same way. That's why I've always loved the knot from day one. But that's the story of that night. And I remember that night like it was fucking crystal clear to me, man. But I, and I remember seeing the cops out front, but I didn't see him talking to you. And I actually thought they were just coming to the building. You know, they oversold that night. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, th- I thought they were just there. They oversold every night on that tour, you know? And uh, I thought the cops were just there because they oversold. But, you know, let me tell you too, Diamond Vinny, like, I can't even tell you how much wisdom I gained from them. Like, I wouldn't have a career if it wasn't for Pantera. I was on, you know... Uh, uh, I'm, just, you know, I was in Vinny's house on his, uh, on his record machine, you know, on his, um, on his jukebox. Like, I loved them. I loved Dime. I lived with Ensamo for years and years. He's still one of my closest fucking friends, and you know, uh, 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 you know, has always kind of been a mentor. And um, yeah, I miss those two cats. And you know, the thing about them is they were such the real deal. They took the time to talk to younger 
fans. Okay, yeah, so nowadays, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Nowadays, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nowadays, if you're a band and you're big, you often don't want to take out the thing that's coming up on you, or the thing that's really coming up hard and being talked about. Not a lot of bands do that now. They keep themselves protected. They keep themselves safe on tours that way. But that band didn't give a shit. Pantera was like, I'm taking out, you know, Cold Chamber. I'm taking out Machine Head. I'm taking out Slipknot. I'm taking out, you know what I mean? They they came to take, take out, out failure. The yeah, taking out Dude. failure, taking out obscure stuff, the Melvins, you know, like it's cool stuff, you know. Not not afraid to give people shots, I, I guess is yeah. what I'm saying. And they were always those dudes. So it's so cool that, that Vin took the time to to give that to you, well, you know, to give that to well, you, man, you know. The whole time the whole time Dime is just staring at me, you know? And I'm like <laughs> I'm like, that's hard to say. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at him. I'm like, something on your mind. I'm like, dime, all respect, brother. I'm sober. Leave me the fuck alone. I'm not right. going to be, I'm like, I'm not going to break my sobriety for you. Do or a shot. Do a shot. Let's do a shot. So, yeah. You know, so the thing is, he's just staring at me. Right. So here's the deal. So we end up going to the strip joint. And that kid, you know, the keg incident, he comes along. And out of respect, Paul Gray, you know, Paul comes up to me. He's like, you're going to go in, aren't you? And I'm like, look, man, I'm going to go in out of respect to these guys' establishment and the invite, of course, and to see some beautiful ladies and say hi to everyone. But I am going to take myself out of that environment tonight. I'm just going to chill out on the bus after they show me around and show me how hard they worked on this place. So anyway, we go in, I'm there five minutes, say hi to everyone, shake hands. Hey, Hey, you know, probably get a dance, whatever, get out of there. But before I go, I'm in the bathroom probably and, dime walks, <laughs> and dime walks in with some bro with a camera and I'm taking a piss. Oh, and I'm God, like, yeah. before he says anything, I grab the urinal cake in the urinal and I just throw it in my mouth and I start, <laughs> eat, I start eating the urinal cake. The dumbest thing I've ever done, right? But I do it. I'm just like, and I'm looking at him like, I'm, I'm not going to fucking drink alcohol and I'm not going to be in your fucking movie. And you're not going to fucking film me. And you're messing with the wrong human being, man. I will go there. And he he just looked at me and he goes, you'd probably eat a turd if I gave it to you. And I just like, <laughs> I'm like, I got to get out of here. So I went to the bus and I locked the door, got in my bunk. And sure enough, man, I got my socks off and pulled the fucking blanket over my head and I hear the code, big, 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 door open. Several people are coming in. I just slam the curtain open, run out. There's dime, cameras. He wants me to go in and eat tomatoes filled with hot sauce for money. I go in <laughs> and against his cook, I make like 500 bucks. We took Polaroids. I still got the money. I still got the Polaroids. Ben needed it to frame it. But like you said, they're sorely missed. They were the real deal. They were <laughs> so fun, so loving, crazy. Same thing on our bus. On our bus. It's three in the morning. Yeah, I Everybody mean, asleep. the fucking door we, opens. It's <laughs> dime and it's tongs. They get Mikey, my drummer, out of his bunk. Mikey reluctantly gets up. They fill an ashtray full of fucking beer. They go drink this for five hundred dollars. Mikey doesn't even think about it. Grabs it, drinks it. Swallows, chews a couple of the cigarettes and looks at him, gets the 500, walks back to his bunk and goes oh, to bed. <laughs> oh, my God. These guys, they are sorely missed, man. Truly legends. Legends, legends. It's just, you know, look, it's not, you know, you don't want to sound like the old guy. It's not like that no more. But, I mean, it's kind of maybe a good thing it's not. I couldn't drink like I used to or, you know, ride on top of the bus on two hits of acid down the freeway. Like, you don't do that now, right? But back in your, when you're when you're young everything is out there and it's yeah. just cool to hear I, stories i wouldn't you know, have had it any cool other way and i wanted to tell you i wanted to tell you and i had no plan on even 
you know, reminiscing because, you know, we reminisce when we have time and when it's appropriate. So I, I love um, reminiscing on all sides of the stories, but I just want to let you know as a friend, man, those are the best times of my career for obvious reasons and unobvious reasons. And yes, you know, when you're an opening band, there's competition. When you're the headlining band, there's competition. There's all that stuff that we all had to deal with, which makes you better. And when they say go, you got to be on. You got to go. You know, got to go. The TV, you got especially if the TV cameras are there or some shit. You know, so you know, when you first start out doing anything, I think it's damn the torpedoes when you're young. You know, like you got it, it. Is, and it should, it's and full it on. Or, or go home. But I yeah. want you to know, man, truly, from me your friend, those were the best times of my life in rock and roll because I didn't know anything and was so hungry, man, you know? So <laughs> my dream, my dream drove my imagination and my imagination wasn't disappointed yet. You know, you know, I like, I like able, take a look back. Was, take a look back. Was the dream the destination? It was not. It was not. The yeah. dream is not the destination. Never you can has sit, we, can sit here, we can sit here and talk bank accounts and stock accounts, or you can say to yourself, was the dream the journey? Oh, shit, yeah. And from day one, the dream was the journey. We played the very it, first Oz Fest, like Sepultura, blah, blah, blah. It was like only one, one day uh, where we played it. I got off stage. Sharon Osbourne comes up to me. Hey, I want to manage you. I'm like, okay. I got a manager right now. He's like, fire him. I called him that night, got on the bus. Hey, look, I'm I'm gonna split. I'm gonna I'm gonna work for Sharon Osborne. I love Ozzy. I love Sharon. Blah blah blah. She gave me this chrome heart bracelet. She wants to manage my career. Manager goes to me, I'm gonna have you killed. That's the first thing you fucking said. <laughs> now now it's hilarious, it's hilarious because even then I'm twenty I'm twenty seven, twenty eight years old. And I said, bro, do you even know who my friends are in this town? Like, do you even know what I did in L.A. before? Like, you are insane to even say that to me, right? But you look back and go, is it the destination, man? And I don't want to be cliche, but it's not. And it doesn't matter if you're a contractor, you know, bricklayer, uh, water and power guy, you, you know, uh, uh, you work at Ralph's. It doesn't matter. The destination is never fucking important. It's the journey along the way. And how many people... Don't take time to enjoy the journey, remember the journey, savor the journey. And here's what I get from your conversation and my conversation and a lot of the cats around us. They went for full on, remembered and looked at full on the journey on the way up, period. And I did. I surely did. I, 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 I looked at it all from a standpoint. I still look at it from a standpoint of from the outside looking in you know year, years and years ago i did this uh christmas record i did this fucking i did food off the red nose reindeer of all things like my style right but when i was leaving uh dio was walking in and it was like about i would say a couple weeks or a month or so before he passed away he comes in and he looks right at me and he's italian too i'm and i'm italian and he looks at me and goes hey kid he pinches my fucking cheek my assistant that was with me at the time it blew his mind we're back in the car we're leaving he's going that was the most insane thing ever. You didn't get a photo. You didn't get an autograph. You just fucking talked to Dio for 20 minutes. You found out that, you know, the way he laid his shit, he laid a keyboard first and then him. He couldn't lay anything unless he laid his keyboards first. You found out. You talked to Dio. You found out the secrets. You met Dio. You didn't get a picture. You didn't get an autograph. He went on and on. By the time I hit the freeway, homie, I looked over him. I said, does the autograph and the picture matter to you, bro? And plus, you were just right there with me. You lived the journey. You just met Dio through me. And I, and I got to see my friend Dio. So the journey is important. That's the, that's, the, that's the hot topic right now that's coming out of this fucking conversation, right? Is the journey is important. And, and we're, think, gonna, you know, we're on a journey right now on the earth. I mean, we're, I mean, the earth has never been, every human being has never been asked to stay in one place at one time for a duration at this caliber ever in the thought ever process in history. Known as reality. They, they didn't even do it. They didn't, yeah, they didn't even do it in the 1918. Uh, yeah, so it's and a journey. And here's We're the thing. You love, Earth. You, lo you love nature. You love Gaia. But here's what's happening. Earth is repairing herself. 
You look at the canals in Italy, they're clear. There's fish in them. You look at India, they can see the Himalayas for the first time in 110 years. You look at my beaches out here, crystal clear. Now you look you're, at getting like in, Thailand. You're, get, you're getting into the big underlayment layers now, man. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go deep. I saw a video, I'm not afraid to say it. It put me in tears about a week and a half ago. It was in Thailand and they were setting free hundreds of elephants because there's no tourism. So they're setting the elephants free. Bro, wow. Bro, if you don't get a tear in your eye, what, you some hard motherfucker? Like I was raised around bikers, but let's talk hard. Let's talk. I was raised around water and power guys and bikers, right? You know, let's, let's talk hard. That broke me. I was like, you know what? Fuck humans at this point. Now, keep in mind, yeah. I'm a Freemason. I do a lot of charity work. Uh, you know, I love humankind. And humankind goes with kindness, right? Look at the earth healing herself. She's done with us. So either this thing was created in a lab by, a, by, by man, you know, or, or somehow just manipulated through the ether, had to get out. Look what it's doing for the earth. So the bigger picture is life is an onion. Fucking peel it down to its bottom source. Enjoy it. Go with the journey. Fucking look around you at the love and the luckiness that you have. Embrace the pain and the loss that you've ever gone through. Fucking, you know, I've lost a lot of close, close friends and family members in the last couple of years. Like, embrace the love that you've had with them. Like, it's just a insane process of, of uh, going through your life and taking a look at yourself and who you are and what you are to other people and what other people are to you and analyzing it. And I think, you know, to get back to the subject of the source, this whole thing we're going through now is about that, simply about that. Who are you in the world? Who are you? If you don't go to work every day, because, you, you know, you're, you know, that's how we identify ourselves. You know, someone says to you, what are you? You don't say I'm a human being. You don't go, you don't say I'm, I'm the clown. Because people go, well, what's that? You're like, I'm a musician. You know, I'm a business owner. I, I, I make movies. I make videos. I make, you know, all the things you do. You introduce yourself as your fucking job. That's not who we are. Who are you? Hi, how you doing? I'm dead. Well, well, what do you do? Well, I, I'm a human being on this earth, man. I could be a good friend or I could be one real mean some bitch. So let's all, let's all get along. Let's be friends. I, let's, you know, let's, I start coming to that a while back where I wanted to way before all this, I, I set to default and reset for myself. And I thought one beautiful way to do it for me was to call myself by my original name, which is Michael, because my father was Michael. So my mom chose to call me Sean, my middle name. So when she was calling us for dinner, she could say Michael and Sean, and we would both. Oh, beautiful. Someone. So that's, that's beautiful. You know, years, years now, it's been several years. I, I, I literally in my neighborhood at the post office at Ace Hardware, when I buy a lawnmower, when I walk in, they're like, how you doing, Michael? Because my dad, oh, passed. I'm an only child. My son, my oldest boy is Michael Gage. But that's kind of like, I want to be treated first zero, right? I want to be treated just like you. I, I'm not special. I'm not different. I may be this brainwashed idea that you've had crammed down your head, you know? I'm, I'm <laughs> ah, well said. And I'm, you know, you know, so I go with it. My I brother, reset. Preach, brother. I, I find myself talking in the third person. I have so many identities. It's insane what the world <laughs> gets it up and on me. So I'm like, preach, you know what? Bro. I'm like, my dad's dead. He's passed. My mom had a wonderful thing when she was mad at him. She called him Mikel. And I miss all that. And I miss my parents. They're both passed. So I'm like, you know what? And it's nice. Like the older generation is a little bit older than me, but younger than my parents. When they call yeah. me Michael, it kind of like brings me back to my parents' generation, even though they're a little younger than them. And it feels good to me. And it just helps me move forward. And it helps me block those things that I think I might have to do. Like you just said, you know, hey, I'm a professional artist. And da, 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 who gives a fuck, man? I'm here buying screws for my lawnmower. You know, like, and first of all, yeah. and first of all, I'm I'm, I'm sorry for your loss because those those are you know, I know your losses, right? Your losses are, are 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 momentous, right? And here's the thing: those people who have passed over the veil, 
and this is what I firmly believe are, and you know, this is uh, actually, you know, probably a Christian or a me mentality, or I was forced to go to a Baptist school for four years. So it's more like, you know, those people that have passed over, like are with you. Right. But no doubt and are, and are in a better place. Right. But let me tell you something, man, you can connect with them. They're still connecting with you. Energy doesn't die. Energy just transfers. Energy becomes a star. Energy becomes the ether around you. Energy becomes the walking on the floor at night that you hear that you're like, what the fuck is that? Energy becomes the slight knock on a fucking door that you don't know what's going on. Energy becomes your sitting in a room and lights flicker, lights start going off, that will never fucking pass. Those people that have gone from you will be there with you forever. And I think me, us as musicians, and, and I've always said this, this is, we've had this conversation, me and Anastasia, the only cats that make it are those who actually identify as something else. So like John is actually Ozzy, my real name, and I wrote a song about him, the first Cold Chamber record is Bradley. You know, you're Sean, but you call yourself Michael because of your father and, you know, and you call yourself clown. You see what I'm saying? And so the thing is, if you don't adapt that other dude, right, you will lose yourself in the dude you're trying to become as we exactly. see so many, so many singers do. And all of a sudden they're the egotistical cocksucker who just won't help any other band, forgot how to lend his hand up. You know, his name is now in lights and it's his real name. He never created any kind of alter ego or alter place to go for stage is what I say, because actually ego does exist on the stage. So and it has to. If it doesn't exist on the stage, then you'll fail. So you have to have ego on stage. But after that, you drop it, you know, and so it's a, it's a good thing that you created that. And dude, I'll tell you this right now. Don't think your father isn't smiling at that shit. Don't think your father. Oh, yeah, he he fucks with me every day. He's teaching me shit every day. You know, I stub my toe. He, you know, he had this saying where he's like, "Could you do that again?" I didn't see it, and I hear that all day long. Like I do stupid <laughs> shit, and there he is. And I'm just like, "Man, dude." But hey, man, you know, you know, we could talk about this for hours. But we've all, I've been here before, and I'm not even from here. You know what I mean? So it's like we've oh, all. Yeah. I love I love this thing this thing that we named reality, seeing how nothing's real anyway, but I At love all. this idea that I'm in a moment in space with everybody that I'm in and that this is my experience here and now with everybody that's in. And it's interesting. And it's just like you say, man, it's how I felt forever. You know, I love that I'm alive right now in this movie because I could not, not be alive trying to figure out what this journey is and what the other side of it is. So I always try to embrace the movie and say, this is this part of the movie and all movies end. You and I aren't going to change that. Uh, we're all, all of our lives are going to end eventually. And we all yep. have to have the best time here and learn as much as we can and become wise. Next time we talk, um, next time we talk, cause you end up, you're going to end up being the person that, that gets this broke for me and it, it's coming no matter what and people just got to deal with it but i'm going to give you i we can't talk about it today because it's got to be a whole different thing and you might not want to talk about it but you told me that you are now with um you were saying um I remember, I just don't want to get it all wrong because you, you were saying about the reservations and that you are now part of a yeah, tribe, yeah, yeah, correct? Yeah, you were, yes, you were, I, feel, yeah. I, I belong to Coyote Pass clan from uh, Window Clan. Lock. Well, not, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. So, so next time we talk, you have a little homework. You have to ask your people about Sasquatch. And next time we talk... We're going to talk. Uh, about so let me tell you. So they'll talk about what they call the big hairy ones. They'll talk about them. But the if spirit? you try to talk about, if you have, but if you try to talk about skinwalkers or anything like that, the people will not, will not discuss it because it will bring it around. But there are some fascinating stories and fascinating on YouTube. There's two Navajo Rangers, okay, which is basically the police for the reservation that are on YouTube right now. That are that discuss their run-ins with the, what what most people would call the paranormal. I call the normal. We've just iced our way out of seeing it and seeing them. And they'll discuss. There's one that I just watched like three nights ago of this girl. She's probably about 17. She's riding her four-wheeler with her her dog, and she comes across three of them, huge animals, 10, 12 feet tall, 
and they just stand there and the dog runs over to them and they start petting the dog and this guy's interviewing her. And I mean, it's plain as day. She's not lying. They see tracks. They see, uh, they see hair. They leave bones out at night for her dog. They come out in the morning and they're coming down to feed the dog. So, yeah, I mean, look, I the way this happened was I started uh, really playing the Navajo uh, Navajo res, a lot of the reses, and I was like, I can't come in here and take anymore. My like people, or whoever our people are, I can't do this. So I said, when I do come. You know, I'm going to make a, a special shirt, and every every time you guys buy it, it goes to the elementary school. Then we did a, a fundraiser that raised, you know, a lot of money for the elementary school because they're losing their language. So we had to get these language programs into their hand. Um, and then from there, the tribe asked me in, the council asked me in, and brought me into a hogan with a shaman, did a really blessed ceremony with just my wife and a few friends that was long, the medicine man, and it was incredible. I've never felt so alive in my life and feel so blessed because in, in all intensive purposeness, right? Like whites decimated the native population, moved, moved them out of their places, put them on reservations. Like, I mean, it's, I, the crimes are just unfucking fathomable. So anything I can do to give back, right? And we all find our niches because like you can't give to everybody or you don't have enough for yourself. So everybody finds their niche. You know, it's like I give to the local cat shelter. It's like, fuck, good for you. I have three cats and actually one of them right now is on its way out. I give to the local, you know, hospital. Well, good for you because my mom and my wife just went through, you know, my wife went through cancer last year and wouldn't have survived without that hospital. So everybody finds their niche to give to. Once you give, even if it's a neighbor next door, hey, man, we're hungry, and you come over with canned goods, and you come over with some water, and you come over with what they need, you will feel what it's like to actually be human, and then we start getting in touch with who the fuck we are, outside of a paycheck, and, a, you know, I'm a checker at Lowe's, I'm a fucking rock star, I'm a whatever, you know, all bullshit titles, right? We start to find out who we are through giving or loving other people. Now, don't get me wrong. If you fuck with me or my family, I could be one real mean son bitch, but I don't want to be and I don't like to be and I don't ever try to be, you know, but you have to be protective. I'm like, you know, if you watch those documentaries, then cool, the lion would fit me well. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here next to my pride and you're not, you know, you're not coming near my kids, my family. So I think, you know, we'll, we'll have a long conversation about that. And what I will do is my brother, uh, Randall, who lives on the res, my Navajo brother, I will have a long conversation with him. Maybe we can even call him on the phone. Yeah. I can tell you some of yeah. the intense, dude, there is some of the most intense shit that happens on the reservation with a Navajo uh, scene craft in the skies and generations and generations of people saying they brought up by the star people, uh, you know, Sasquatch everywhere, all the time. Uh, skinwalkers, which if you look into, are it's a frightening fucking thing. Basically, Navajo witches is what they are, um, but not in the cool way. You know, it, it, you know, it, you know, you know what I'm saying. And it's, it's serious. Um, it's serious. It's it's, I, it's no, and it's so serious that I, if you mention it, the, the elders go Whoop, like. I want to. Like I want to go on the record. I want to go on the record right now. My interest. My interest. It's. It's. It, it, it has some definite other parts to it that are a little more obscure. But my whole thing these days, in reality, is I know I owe it to myself to peel away this onion of reality that's been force fed to me from tying my shoes the way they want me to, the way that has been taught easiest or most convenient or stays tied the most, whatever. It was taught to well me. Said. I learned it. I learned it. I, had, had, you know, I brought it into my world and I've never changed it or even questioned it and never even thought I could do something else. So it's interesting when people do things with their laces because I'm like, whoa. That person, they, they, <laughs> they stepped out of reality. But anyway, my, I, I really spend a lot of time these days trying to realize what my feet feel like in real earth, not in a sub, sub, uh, suburb where dirt has been brought in and they left a pine tree that wasn't even here, you know, 10,000 years ago. But I try, I try my best to understand more 
you know, that I'm used to hearing cars and police sirens and airplanes. I'm not used to hearing a potentially silent force that would let my brain think that something's wrong. But in actuality, it's completely normal and beautiful so and actually very call, refreshing. That's why they call you an earthling, because you're trying yeah. to constantly touch earth with your feet and not put on shoes, which we're made to wear, right? There's a, yeah. there's a place we go here by my house called the Plateau. And it's Cleveland National Forest. And I, I play Native American flute for years and years and years. Um, I actually have a record that's out you can, you can find called High Desert Moon. And uh, I go, we go up there. And we try to go up there at least once a week. We'll go up way early in the morning or right as it's getting dusk, right? And there's these like little waterfalls that run and stuff. Not heavily populated at all. Matter of fact, like I haven't seen a person up there in two months, right? And we go up there and I'm like, listen. And she's like, what? I go, what do you hear? It's like, I just heard a bird. Right, what else do you hear? Just heard crickets. I go, yeah, but it's not nighttime. You hear crickets? Yeah, I hear crickets. Okay. We sit there, jam the flute, and fucking, like, literally be as as alt away from what I normally do, which is, come on, motherfucker, give me your, give me your everything. Get in the pit. Throw down. Because, you know, me, I, you know, with me in music world, if it's not volatile and it's not dangerous, I really don't want to be part of it. But this is a whole way to like get grounded, get away from yeah. yourself. So find a place. And here, here's what I offer to you. Anytime you want to get away when we can, go camping, go up here on Pato, go to the res with me. We can stay at the Anastasi ruins with my brother because he's part of the tribal council. And we could spend the night there. And he has had experiences waking up, seeing warriors below him, seeing lights in the sky, hearing crazy noises like let's go do that let's venture out and until you do that you won't you won't never you'll never touch that you know what i'm saying like you have you can to watch you have to eyes open you yeah, yeah eyes yeah, yeah, open totally. you know? with any of this stuff i'm not i'm not into apps and you know and all I, i'm into experience i'm 50 years old I'm, I'm into putting my feet in the sand and feeling the sun and seeing what we can find in the forest and and come across an old Chevy and wonder how the hell did this get in here? And so I'm with you. You count me in on that. I will definitely yeah. do that. Listen, well, you're welcome friend. here anytime. You're welcome well, here you anytime. here too. If you're ever, hey, if you're ever in Des Moines, Iowa, oh. stop all by. <laughs> which, 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 oddly, which oddly enough, I am two times a year most of the time. Of but, course. You know, even, even like Randy from Lamb of God, he's got what I say, he's got a room here. Since my kid moved out, we redid the room and, put uh put uh, towels in there with ours on him and stuff because he's part of sun cult our company that we run and he surfs like i do and we have these conversations all the time man like where he's staying with me for a week and like we're not looking at social media we're not watching tv we're not you know what i'm saying we're hanging out we're gonna go surf we're gonna go we're 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 away from all of that we're trying to catch something that's different because we all have the same job you me and him which are come on motherfucker bring it because it helps people to come to a gig and come on, motherfucker, bring it. But then when we go home, you think I want to come on, motherfucker, bring it? No, I no don't. Way. I want to back. I want to back away and gain a little something for myself. And yeah, so you're welcome in, in Cali anytime, my man. You know, my my house is open to you. I'm gonna take that up. I want you uh, tell everybody in all your worlds, our mutual friends, much respect and love, and tell them hey from the clown and. Give your wife my love and your family. Stay safe, my friend. And uh, look, man, you're my bro. And I always look forward. One reason why I'm trying to do this, um, besides, you know, I'm basically doing it because I'm trying to open myself up to something that is different for me. But mainly, I finally am making time to do something that I've kind of always wanted to do. You know, it's like, we convince ourselves we're only going to say hi when I see you out there. And anymore, it, I could see you out there. I couldn't see you out there. It's like I, I, anymore, as the years go on, it seems like we get under the venue further and further away from anything. And it just gets more depressing. So um, I love being able to talk to my friends, and especially a couple memories and stuff. So, man, much love. I'll tell to you why, what, you're, what you're doing is cool, brother, because it's a, not a um... – a question-based thing. It's call your friends and have a conversation of where you at in the moment. We could yeah, end up talking almost about 
yeah, we could have ended up talking all morning about, you know, if I had a broken leg, we'd talk about it all morning. You know what I mean? It's, it's where are we all right now? So, man, much love to you. Send, send love to the camp. Um, Anastasia says hello. She just walked in. And, uh, I'll, you know, I'll send my hellos to everybody. And then good luck with this thing, man. You know, and, you know, keep these interviews the same way you're doing them, which is like, hi, what's happening? Do you know what I mean? That's all it's going to be, you, man. You know, how you many know interviews me. do you do? You know, how many interviews do you do on a record cycle, bro? Where it's the same question and same. It's like, dude, let's peel the onion. Oh, great. I just did 40 interviews. Nobody even peeled the onion. Okay, cool. Late. If you want service, yep. you'll get it. But, but here's what I'm I like so, about what you're doing. You're I'm so done with that, way. man. I mean, I'm so done with that. I mean, I we know. We've done it. We've played the game. We've given everybody a chance. We've given the older generation a chance. We've given the newer generation a chance. The agendas never change. So I want to do my part and try to change an agenda that can bid people against each other, uh, provide false uh, information, but most importantly, never identify. They never identify the true humanness of the the human being they're speaking to. I never get aligned with the human. You know, it's it's all yeah. bureaucratical. <laughs> it, you know this one. What's the mask for? Oh my god! You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, you know what I'm saying, brother. Well, brother, look. You know, I think people are going to enjoy uh, your format. I think you just get on people who, you know, get on with people who actually you're friends with and that give a fuck. You know, I love you. I'm, I'm happy for all your success. I'm happy for, for everybody around me's success. I think you and I are, are one of the only ones that actually do reach down and take younger bands, you know, and do things for, in our scene to help. And, you know, should you want to get involved uh, with the Navajo Nation, there is something you could do for me. Call me back later, but we need a... They want everybody to kind of tell the young ones to wear their masks because they're not on the res. And so we're doing this thing right now where I'm sending it out to everybody to kind of do a little video message to, to the young ones to, to wear their masks on the res and stuff. So, you know, hit me back after this and in a half hour, hour, whatever, text me, you know, and then if you could text me a short little video, four seconds, four minutes, one minute, two seconds, it doesn't matter. Just saying this is clown from Slipknot. I want everybody on the res to wear their masks and protect the elderly. It'd be great. So. Get, you know, you got to give back, right? That's what we're here for, man. That's what we're here for. And I love, I love what you're doing. I think your format is f- fucking fantastic. I haven't done a podcast in a year and a half, and I don't even know how much press I'm going to do on my new record, frankly. I'm over it. I'm over it. I would want to be asked real questions. And this was a, this is a, a really cool time to talk to a really fucking cool friend, somebody I've been in league with forever, but I don't know if we've ever sat down and had an hour and a half chat. It's always 15 minutes five minutes, 10 minutes on the way to the stage, back from the stage. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. You see what I'm saying? And it becomes so, really? Are we friends? Let's fucking talk about shit. How was well, that's what it is, man. That's what, <laughs> that's what I, that's more or less you've hit on it. I mean, it's like, I don't allow myself and haven't allowed myself because of them to have a real conversation with people that I find my friends that are interesting that I know think about what I think that might sh- knowledge is something you give. So, you know, if I do this text thing, that's what I'll say. You know, it's like yeah. knowledge is something that you give. So, you know, especially with the Indian nation, I mean, we've all learned from them about the knowledge that they can give us about the fine planet we're on. So that's what I would say is, you know, Hey, knowledge yeah, is something you give yeah. and you got to wear a mask because it's just proven whether you want to find there it you or not. It's just fucking proven. And, uh, there you go. And, it, it, it helps. and here's the deal, homie. And here's the deal, homie. You never lost yourself. You never became an egotistical mess. So it's so wonderful to talk to Michael. I can't even fucking tell you. <laughs> you, understand you, under, you understand? You understand what I'm saying? I, I do, man. It's, so, it's, it's just, so it, it's a lot of fun for me to do. Uh, I've done very few so far because I'm not trying to put too much pressure on this. It's not. I don't care, you know, I don't care where it's going or what it's doing. I leave that to the people that are excited about that. I just, what you and I are doing right now, it really matters to me. And I feel what we are doing is what I can offer uh, to humans that are going to, you know, uh, chime in and hopefully they'll leave and, and, and pay attention to what it is, we're, what we're doing. And what we're doing is 
admitting that we never get more than 15 minutes and we got to hit all the usual subjects that are bullshit. And uh, I really would just want to talk to my friend and same with you. And here we are. And Hey man, thanks. Much love. Uh, uh, much, be safe. much love to you. All right, brother. Thanks a lot for your time. And uh, we'll be in contact. Let me, um, let me get through my day here, but I'll, I remember what you said and we'll, uh, we'll get on with it. But if you need anything from me, you know, and we'll do this again, man. I'll see you soon. Yeah, brother. L&R, love and respect. All right, man. See you later. Take care, buddy.